is so much bigger than it was at New York Comic Con. How is it to have been part of something that was just so embraced by like the internet loves you, Tumblr's a huge fan, like the, you guys got early renewal. It was just a complete runaway success. It's amazing. I mean, we're so lucky and to work on a show that we actually all really love and we're fans of as people who are even working on it, it's a show I would watch, and to see how people have responded is its really special. And Comic Con's perfect for this because this show really did have a social media aspect to it. The fans that watched this show went beyond just watching it. They would send us sketches of the actors and they would respond when we were having live tweets and social media. So they've helped us think about the show, so it's great to be here and be able to pay it back. Yeah, the uh, really big one was the baseball, wasn't it? That turned into like a huge thing. Did you guys get any um, art from that after you did the baseball part? Yeah, we did. And actually, someone in our office made us a book of all of the fan art, which is pretty incredible. I have, I have it on my coffee table at work. But, yeah, it's like yeah. a Christmas gift that we gave each other is taking the fan art. It's literally coffee table books for us. Yeah, so nice. Which yeah. is cool. We should show that. Yeah. yeah. You absolutely should. I would buy it. I'm like, well, I want to see all the fan art. Uh, have you guys seen anybody wandering around Con as headless or war? This morning I was at the Sleepy Hollow Oculus Rift uh, experience where there's lots of uh, headless horsemen around there. Have you seen this thing? I have seen it on, like, as passing. I haven't got a chance to stop by yet. I'm it's going incredible. to. It's like, it yeah, it's like a virtual reality version of Ichabod Crane coming to warn you about the headless horseman. And then he shows up and he chops your head off. <laughs> and your head falls off from the point of view. It's amazing, you gotta check it out. So awesome, have you done it yet? I haven't, I think we're doing it tomorrow though, I heard. It's incredible. Yeah, I'm psyched, I'm psyched. Yeah. Uh, what have we got to look forward to in season two? I know everything ended very poorly for just about everyone that's not a villain at the end of season one. The villains are winning. Yeah. You know, we still have a lot of the great friendship and the great fun and it's still like about figuring out the modern day and it's still Abby being his guide. But the stakes are higher now. They, they really all went through something. They're all in a really difficult situation. Ichabod and his wife Katrina found out that their son is literally the god of war. And so it's, it's a roller coaster. It's fun, but it's also the stakes are a lot higher this year. And it's a big family drama because can you imagine you find out your son that you didn't even know you had is now actually a really, really bad guy. And what does that do to your marriage when your wife wants, thinks he can be redeemed? Because mothers, of course, you know, want to believe the good in their kid and maybe the father after a while, not so much. And how does Abby feel about that? And so there's a lot of family drama that's gonna happen. Speaking of family drama, I know Abby and Jenny are still, you know, we're better, but it, you don't solve problems overnight. Is there anything going on with them this season to uh, move that storyline along? They're gonna find out about their mother. They're going to find out kind of a deeper history about who they are and where they came from. And so in the first year, they were sort of fighting. Yeah. This year, they're a little bit more united, but then the secrets that they uncover about their mother and about their family, let's see how they react. Different approaches to that information. So the show really, even though it still has a supernatural element, obviously, it really is like a family drama just in a casing of uh, the end of times. Totally. I mean, assume, ass, let's say the craziest thing that ever happened to you happened, and some god came down and made your life heck, you'd still have a sister and a brother and a mother and a father, right? Like, that's just our condition. And war, headless horsemen, these are all human beings. The idea that evil can't just send some demon with no, you know, no connection to us. It's, we cause evil on each other. It's humanity that is the drama of this. I also think the best shows... Our, our makeshift family, you know, even if it's not an intentional family. And I mean, when we all did Fringe, we talked about from the beginning that was a family show, or I was a fan of Sex in the City, and that always felt like a, a wish fulfillment family. And so she's giving me. She's giving me the wrap-up sign, so one last question. Um, the God of, or, you know, Headless has been wandering around with some pretty heavy artillery. Is war going to be like, step off my game? Those are, that's my, di that's my bit. You can't have my AKs. Those are mine. <laughs> War is pretty, uh, he's, he, he's so contentious, war. Have you noticed that about him? I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. He's He's war. So yeah, I think he's gonna, he's gonna, I think, look at Headless and go, boy, I'm pretty jealous of that AK. I like that, yeah. Can I borrow your AK? Yeah. We haven't done that yet, but maybe yeah, we should. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you for that. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.